animals and things that go bump in the night. As you've probably realized by now, it is definitely spooky season. Which, just in case you weren't aware, is in fact this podcaster's favorite time of the year. I love everything to do with fall and specifically Halloween. In fact, I've already done the whole pumpkin patch corn maze thing, and that means all that's left is a good haunted house or haunted hayride. Or both, if I'm really lucky. That being said, this week's story is kind of making me rethink the whole haunted hayride thing. So, why don't you sit back, relax, and tune in for It's Just an Actor. Mike, come on, it's just a hayride. Nash nudges me hard in the side from the driver's seat, keeping his eyes on the narrow, foggy road ahead. I don't really care. I hate this horror stuff. It's just plain creepy. Shivers make their way up my arms and against the back of my neck. Growing up, my family blatantly forced horror movies and books down my throat. I remember being nine years old and crying while I watched the girl from The Ring climb out of the well and then out of the TV. I didn't sleep for weeks. Oh, don't be a little baby, Nash snickers, turning up the radio, blasting rap music through the old truck as we barrel down the long dirt road. Besides, there's going to be a lot of terrified girls looking for a big, strong guy to protect them from all the creeps. Lights grab my attention as we pull into the parking lot. The outline of the lot in the middle of a cornfield was lined with Christmas lights covered with little ghosts and pumpkins. The music turns to static. Well, looks like we're in the middle of nowhere, he chuckles, turning off the car. Seems legit for a horror attraction. Yeah, well, whatever, I sigh, knowing all too well that I signed up for this and there was no backing out now. I needed to be a good friend for him. No one else had wanted to go, and Nash was really excited about it. Why would I be the one other person to let him down? (sighs) Let's just get this over with, I mumble, stretching my legs and stepping out of the car. The cool breeze hits my neck, and I pull the collar of my jacket up and around, just enough to block it from the whispers on the back of my neck. He locks the car and we make the trek up the lit path where dozens of other people are already headed. Ahead, a coffin with a skeleton holding the sign, Reaper's Revenge Admissions. We wait in the long line, the night getting darker. I look behind me, taking in the surroundings. The line ends at the end of a bridge. I look down at my feet seeing we're standing in the middle of an old wooden one-way bridge. Around me, the woods seem to close in on me, pushing against my chest and making me shake, not from the cold, but from fear. Across the edge of the bridge on the other side of the water, little red eyes lined the tree line, blinking every few seconds. Hey, those bad eyes over there are really cool. They aren't creepy, though. They should have tried to put an actor over there who moves around every once in a while. Now that would be scary. Nash pulls his phone out of his pocket, the light blinding us momentarily. It was 10 o'clock at night, just in time for the place to open. The line moves forward, picking up the pace as we reach Halloween decorations lining a wire zigzag path in front of the ticket booth. Around the area, people are laughing and listening to the band playing on the other side of the park. 
and suddenly people start screaming. I can't help but jump, fear creeping up in my chest. Nash laughs at me, pushing my shoulder lightly with his. Dude, this is gonna be amazing. We reach the end of the ticket line. Nash giving the woman behind the counter the printed tickets his mom had bought for him for his birthday. It must be nice, liking the scary stuff and not being afraid of it like I am. Continuing through the area, food trucks display corn dogs, popcorn bags, and the fryers are filling the air with nothing but the scent of grease. Stands containing beanies and shirts with the logo of the hayride are littered around it, up for an expensive price, creating a crescent around a small sitting area surrounding a campfire. I can smell the smoke, the ash burning my lungs. We hurry past the fire pit, entering another line that starts the attraction. Ahead of us, a group of people make small talk, asking each other if they've been there before. Nash joins the conversation, pulling me along next to a girl with long brown hair. Hey, you been here before? The brunette blushes, turning her face towards the dirt. Yeah. I've been here before. A blonde across from her speaks up, her large glasses encasing her face with a slight glow, almost like a halo. It's awesome. You guys are gonna love it. The other girl sighs, shifting her feet. Whatever you say, Becca. Becca clicks her tongue, laughing off the other girl's blatant uncomfortableness. Sam. I'm not like you, okay? Horror stuff freaks me out. You know that. But you're the bestest friend ever for coming with me. Becca hugs Sam tightly, squeezing her with a high-pitched squeal. Nash laughs, striking up a casual conversation with Becca. I shove my hands in my pockets, looking down at my feet. My black hair falls slightly in front of my eyes, so I shake it away. Out of the corner of my eye, I can see Sam staring at me. She catches my gaze, immediately turning away, and I look towards your friend. <clears throat> I clear my throat. You know, I hate this stuff too. Her green eyes light up, a smile painting its way across her face. You do? I nod. Our small group steps further down the line, getting closer to the entrance of the attraction with each step. I step closer to her, smelling a faint scent of flowers and hot chocolate. I smile. Yeah, this stuff has always freaked me out. You know, I only agreed to this because she did me a favor before. Now, I guess it's just a form of repayment. I laugh knowing exactly what she means by that. Becca's voice erupts from in front of Noah, catching us both off guard and sending me jumping out of my skin. You guys know the actors are allowed to touch you. That's sick. Except, she didn't mean sick as a bad thing. Nash, I shudder, feeling the chill and terror creeping up my spine again. I, I, I don't know how I feel about this, man. I don't want them to get any closer than they have to be. Mike, come on, man. Don't be such a little baby. He opens his eyes wide, giving me the signal to stop talking. Next? I didn't even realize what we were next in line. The staff member leads us onto a large hayride. We take a seat close to each other, Sam and I pressed up against each other. I turn my head, attempting to get some distance between us. I didn't want to make this complete stranger uncomfortable. All right, people, listen up. A woman dressed as a zombie climbs in the middle of the hayride, her hands in the air. I'm going to explain the rules of Reaper's Revenge and then I'll send you off, all right? Good. So the actors can and will touch you. 
We just ask that you don't touch them or hurt them in any way. They're getting paid to scare you, and you paid to get scared. So understand, this is all under the agreement you signed when buying your tickets. I hadn't realized Noah's mom had to sign a waiver for us to be here. Also, with that being said, others have paid to be here, so don't ruin the experience for them and keep your comments, phones, and anything else to yourselves. May God save you sorry bastards. The woman jumps off the back of the hayride, turning her head to the side and waving slowly at us as the tractor jolted into movement. Jeez! I looked down at my shaking hands, attempting to stop them from quivering so much. Maybe it's a mix of cold and terror. Who knows? The darkness ahead blocks my vision, and I find myself turning all around me, attempting to point out anyone who could be in there waiting to scare me. Nash whoops in excitement, getting a laugh from some of the other people on the hayride. I'm so excited, man! This is going to be great! Becca joins in with his excitement. The tractor stops in front of a television planted in a tree. My heart sinks. No. I find myself whispering, unable to turn away from the television. The TV flicks on, static playing across the screen. And then the sound is all throughout the air around us. Suddenly, I'm thrown into the ring all over again. The three-minute movie that was the whole plot plays across the screen. Gore, images, sound, everything. I'm suddenly the nine-year-old boy who almost lost his mind watching this movie the first time. I look down at the hay we're sat in, the only one looking away, but I don't care. The whole thing is just so wrong. This isn't something anyone should pay to see. No one should pay to be terrified. The movie ends and we abruptly move again. I sigh in relief, so happy to be away from the horrible movie, only to be thrown into a worse fear. The well. That damn well is right behind me, illuminated by two spotlights. The tractor stops. I can't turn away from the well my whole body shaking in fear. An arm flies up and out of the well, followed by a head of black hair covering a woman's face. I turn away, holding back tears. I suck in and let out fast breaths, hyperventilating and stopping myself from breathing. How is this happening? How is the first thing on this ride, Samara? groaning can be heard right above my head. My heart stops. I can't breathe. People across from me point to me, laughing, with smiles across their faces as they huddle closer together. I turn, slowly, praying she isn't there, but breath tickles across the back of my neck. I scream, crawling fast away from her, standing inches from my body, and crawling into the people laughing and having grand old time behind me. The actor was dressed completely in white, tarnished by dirt and grime from inside the well. She climbs up the rails of the tractor and into the center of the ride. I pull my feet towards me, getting no traction and kicking away at nothing for support. I didn't even realize Nash, Becca, and Sam are laughing and watching from behind her. I close my eyes tight, hoping she'll leave me alone and go to someone else when she sees how scared I am. Instead, her hands tightly grip onto my left leg. I open my eyes with a snap, a scream escaping my throat along with it. The actress smiles, turning her head and clicking her tongue, a groaning sound erupting from her throat. Her bones crack and joints pop as she pulls on my leg dragging me to the end of the hayride and down the stairs. I grab onto the cold metal handrails, heart pumping too fast for my body. Am I going to have a heart attack? 
My hands slip from the rails and I'm pulled out of the safety of the ride, hitting my head roughly against the dirt and gravel. The engine on the tractor starts up again. They start driving away and all I can think about is what that woman said. They're just actors. They're allowed and they are going to touch you. You can't touch them. You're paid to be here. Hey, hey, wait! We can't leave him here. He's a customer like we are. Nash's voice reaches my ears. I wait desperately for him to be at my side, but instead a pinch in my chest takes all of my focus. I crane my neck to look down at my chest, staring at a long silver knife sticking out of the left side of my upper body. Everything's warm. I'm not shivering anymore. When did I get so warm? Mike? Mike? With Nash's yell, pain rushes over me, and I can't breathe. The pain encasing me in a pinch pressed into my skin with the force of a baseball bat. My vision fades, shaking and distorting everything around me into waves and static and darkness before I close my eyes. Samara leans over me, grasping the handle of the knife in my chest. She whispers, We can touch you, but you can't touch us. She pulls the knife out of my skin in one fell swoop, and all I see is darkness. And that was the last of the story. It's just an actor. I don't know about you guys, but it's enough to make me think twice about going on a haunted hayride. What's your favorite thing to do around Halloween? Let me know. You can find me on Facebook at Haunted Horror Historian, or send me an email at hauntedhorrorstorian at gmail.com. Until next time, listeners, stay spooky, and remember, sometimes it's more than just a story.